Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, our topic is loving our uh, love for our enemies. Okay? Yes, love for our enemies. Now I will say this: um, out of all the scriptures, uh, this is one of the things that many have issues with. You know, in in Luke six chapter twenty seven through the thirty six verse. Um, right, really, it's the identity of uh, a Christian. It's something that's not optional for a Christian to do. Um, if you have a red letter Bible, you will see your letters in red. If you follow us through your Bible, uh, these are the words of Jesus. Um, and any any time Jesus speaks, he has all attention. You know, so we're going through. Uh, we went through Unit One, struggles with love, and then we're still in Unit Two, inclusive love. But I think with this, uh, uh, we may end up going back with unit one's theme, <laughs> struggles with love. Because if you're honest with yourself, this is uh, definitely something we struggle with, love, love for our enemies, you know. Um, and this is something that we'll see in scripture that is not about just uh, someone who had a bad day or, now I'm talking about those who really hate you. <laughs> Those who don't want you to do well, do, do not want to see you succeed. Uh, uh, those really, really who hate you. And I got to thinking about uh, a few things. Um, we have uh, a problem. It's called obedience. You know, uh, mm -hmm. one thing about Christians, uh, we have, uh, no matter what age, we have um, an issue. And uh, we have an issue with being told what to do. A lot of us uh, don't don't like being told what to do, no matter what it is. Uh, we, in our marriage, we don't like being told what to do. On our job, we don't like being told what to do. In the body of Christ, we don't like being told what to do. And I got to thinking about all these things because one thing in a marriage is something that, that happens between a man and a woman who, who tries to, to be married and have a biblical marriage is something that the woman has an issue with. And what's that word? Uh, submission. Submission. All right. That, that submission yeah. word to, to be obedient. And, and why do you think that the woman has that issue with that word? It's, it's only a word, right? What Eve did. Because of what Eve did. Because of what Eve did? Yeah. The giving uh, up of herself. Giving up of herself. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes men don't know the difference between submission and control. It's a big difference. All right. Cherie, you have taken the bait. I was, I was waiting on somebody to go there. And, and the reason why I threw that out there like that is because you chose them. <laughs> Yeah. So, so, so when we, good answer when, when we look at those things like that men are not perfect okay right. not by any means neither is the woman perfect not by any means you know so so you're going to have some some issues there but as far as the layout how marriage is supposed to go um, um god has aligned us a set of standards to follow okay and so when, when the man gets out of line, guess who he has to answer to? To God. You know, mm -hmm. he has to answer to God. So that's why it's so important to get a godly man. Now, fast forward. Let's go to on the job. Now, for those who, uh, who are retired, you remember how it was on the job. For those who are still yes. working, uh, you know how it is on the job. And some people have an issue with policy. Just following policy. It, it shouldn't be that hard to do. You're going to get a check either every week or every other week. But but what's our issue with following policy? Can't be on your cell phone at work. Rebellion. Re rebellion. Mm -hmm. Rebellion. It, it, it's some things you, you should be able to look past. Or do you really have to address everything? But policy are there, is there for a reason, right? Right. It's That's there right. for a reason. That's right. And if we had no policy, just think if we had right. no policy in your workplace, mm -hmm. it would be yeah. just like a daycare, yes. wouldn't it? Yes. It would. No, no rules, no, no policy. Chaos. You know, so, so we look at those who have an issue with policy. And then so we go into the body of Christ. Now, here we go. We have so, so many that have an issue with God, how he wants to run his house with how he wants 
us to, to be obedient to him with rules that he wants us to follow and he commands us to follow him. It goes back to having issues with being controlled. We have an issue with uh, uh, being told what to do, all right, and how to do it. We want to pick what we want to choose to obey. And that does not work in God's house, not in the body of Christ. So, so there's a, a reason why rules are in place. There's a reason why, why God is speaking to us today as far as how to love our enemies and how this is not only important for the body of Christ, but guess what? The body of Christ is going to affect the whole world if you follow his instruction. Now, when you want to choose to do things your way, you're out of line. And that's why I'm so glad that Pastor Parker continues to remind us, let's do it God's way. If you do it any way contrary to God's way, then guess what? You're going to have a problem. Now, one thing that I know we don't like, too, is uh, being wrong. So if you want to be right every time, and I like being right, then guess what? I got to do it God's way. So in order for me to do it God's way, I have to know that he is the way. All right. So I need to know a little bit about him. I need to know about God's word. I need to know, uh, uh, I need to meditate on God's word. I need to pray to him. And guess what? Sometimes I need to just learn how to be quiet, be silent, and let him do the speaking to me. All right. So, so sometimes with, 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 with God, I think it's so much, we, it's almost like playing hopscotch, trying to get a word in because we have so much to say and to tell him how he want us to, how we, he, we want him to run our lives, what all he want us to do, what all burdens he want us to take away, what all, he want, you know, all these list of things to do, but, but he's waiting on us to just be quiet and then do some talking to us. So I got to thinking about the policy, and um, 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 this is a, a good example as well. Y'all know we're in the midst of a pandemic, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic, and something so simple as a mask can save not only your life, but save, save others' lives too. But do you know there's people out there fighting with each other simply because they do not want to wear a mask in the schools, in the hospitals, in the stores? You know, I mean, where the police are having to be called. It's a lady who was at a game. I don't know whether you all watched YouTube or not, but she was tased simply because she would not wear a mask. So, so what's so hard about following the rules? Now, I mentioned marriage. Marriage is, you're not, no marriage is perfect, okay? No job is perfect. Even the body of Christ, because it's, it's built of a, a bunch of us, who have issues, who are not perfected yet. We're still up under construction. But guess what? The one who's given the orders is perfect. Mm -hmm. The one who's given the orders is Jesus Christ. The one who's given orders is not telling us something to do that he has not done already. So we talk about practicing what you preach. That's exactly what Jesus Christ is doing. We're, he's practicing what he's preaching. So that's why I love in the life of Christ. So guess what? Disobedience, it just didn't start, you know, uh, 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 with you, okay? So we look at Revelations 12 and 9, where there was a war in heaven. Y'all remember reading this? And, and Michael, the fighting angel, and, uh, and uh, they were, got the fighting against the dragon and his angels, and guess what? They prevailed not, okay? But, but the place that was found, it was a fight in heaven, and guess what? The great dragon, that old serpent called the devil, Satan, was the seed of the whole world, guess what? He was cast unto earth, and his angels was cast out with him. The reason why I brought that up, because not following the rules and not being obedient started before we even got here. So if it started with Lucifer, and you have to know a little bit about Lucifer to understand where I'm coming from, he had uh, the highest position up under God in heaven. His name meant light. Okay, he was an angelic being that had uh, um, he had followers of him. He had position, but something got in, in the way of all this good stuff that's, uh, that he had, and that was his pride. He couldn't forget about himself. He got to looking at that throne, and, and, and he wanted to be in that throne. He, he wanted to be able to tell others what to do. Now, God has already given him rule over some, but he wanted ultimate rule. 
And I got to thinking about what keeps us from being totally obedient, totally submissive to one who is the way, not, not just knows the way, but one who is the way. Our pride gets in the way. The fact that we are, are, are uh, um, um, selfish people, that gets in the way. The fact that we, we have our own thing and we want to do what we want to do and we want to cling to the, 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 um, the, the uh, excuses to, you know, uh, uh, to just get by with our sin. But God has called us to a higher standard. He gave us his best in Jesus Christ and he declares that we do the same. So we have to get rid of ourselves. So let's look at Luke's sixth chapter, 27 through the 29th verse. And this is something that uh, we have to understand what's going on at this time, because early in, in Luke 6, um, um, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees are trying to trip Jesus up. Uh, he, they, um, they catch him, what they call working, when they're uh, going and uh, separating the weak you know, from the tares, and they're um, actually picking the wheat or whatever. And then you, they have an issue with that. Then they also have an issue with uh, the Lord healing on the Sabbath day. They call that work, you know. And then they, uh, you fast forward to right before the scripture of today where Jesus Christ, before he elected the 12 disciples, not called apostles yet, but the 12 disciples, he prayed. So he went to the Father in prayer and he prayed. And then right before the Beatitudes, he gave the Beatitudes. And some call this the Sermon on the Mount. Some call this the Sermon on the Plain. Uh, but right now, I'm not really going to waste that much time. All we know that the Lord gave a sermon, all right? And he, he showed us exactly the identity, the true traits of a true Christian, and how we should not only live, but how we should act and react to those who don't have our best interests at heart. So he's not only, so who's Jesus' audience in this? He's not only talking to the disciples, but he knows that he has a great group, a lot of people that he's healed. OK, that's following him. A lot of people are following him simply because they're looking at him not only like a, a, like a magician, one who can who can perform miracles. Uh, he also has an entourage of people that are trying to trip him up, trying to find a way to to see how they can do away with him. These are a lot of the religious leaders. You know, a lot of people are following him also because they're hungry. You know, you, you feed that many people. Uh, you better believe that it's going to be some people showing up ready to eat. So, so we look at all these things that's going on, and God and Jesus Christ knows the audience that He has. But listen to the message that He gives His audience. He starts in verse twenty-seven. He says, "But I say unto you, which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you." All right. Now we got to pause there. All right. He's saying to those who hear. Now, this word, when you look this word up, because this, these are simple scriptures to follow, but it's difficult for us to actually uh, put uh, our, our minds and our foot, feet into action with this. Those who are willing to do, those who are willing to hear. He's talking to those who are uh, believers in Jesus Christ. All right. Because the ones who do not believe in Jesus Christ are the ones who do not hear, all right? Those are the ones who are not necessarily doers of the word, okay? So it's very easy for those to lose to lose them first, uh, first verse with the 27th verse. But he's telling them to love your enemies, you know? And you look at the word enemies, those who do not want the best for you, those who talk um, um, illly or falsely against you, um, those who um, 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 spread all types of rumors or hatreds or ill feelings or ill intentions against you. We know what enemies are and says, do good to them which hate you, you know. So we talk about loving. That's an action word. And this is a command by Jesus Christ. Loving those uh, uh, which are the, your enemies and also doing good to them which hate you. So I'm going to open that up. Why is it so hard to do these things? And can we do them by ourselves? Pat, uh, uh, Brother Evans, we can't do it by ourselves. Uh, we have to have that help. And I'm so glad we do have help 
But no, we can't, at least I'm gonna say I can't. I have to constantly pray because when I don't think that someone hate me and that word is pretty deep, you know, that that's a, it, it begins to mess with you from the inside out because mm-hmm. you're thinking why? Sometimes you may know, but a lot of times you're going, why they hate me so? But then it tells us to love your enemies and to do good. That's a hard one. I could not, and I know I can't do it without the Holy Spirit working on me. And I don't always obey him when he tell me to either, but that's another story. That's another journey for me. Yes, ma'am. For for us all, Sister Parker. Yes, yes. Do we have anyone who wants to comment on that? Because one thing Sister Parker mentioned, that we cannot do it on our own. Okay, this this is not uh, um, um, a natural thing because you look at the the way we are taught. You know, if somebody hits you, what were you taught? Now, let's be honest. If somebody hits you, what you do? Hit them back. back. And and some family, you you better hit them back. Yeah, yeah, that's right. (laughs) Now, let's just be honest, you know, uh, and then, too, we, we are automatically trained. Those who, who uh, use you and we know that to be your enemy, you know, don't do anything for those people. In mm-hmm. fact, stay away from them. Mm-hmm. You know, so mm-hmm. Jesus Christ is saying something that children of God should automatically be lured to, you know, and he's oh, talking yeah. also to those other ones who don't get it. And necessarily, and, and guess what? They don't agree. Jesus Christ lost a lot of members this day. Mm. There was a lot of people who left, you know, because he wasn't preaching and teaching what they wanted to hear. Right. And it's, just, it's like that today. It, it just depends on what scripture is being taught or being preached about the, that determines mm. whether you're going to actually sit there or whether you're going to come back next Sunday. Mm. This mm-hmm. is not easy to do. Loving your enemies. Do good for right. um, to them which hate you. Y'all, we're talking about a loving Savior. You know, mm-hmm. who, who, guess what? He's not only showing, he's not only telling you to love your enemies, he's showing them how to love their enemies. Y'all, I know heaven was comfortable. But for, for Jesus Christ to leave a comfort zone of where he was to come down, y'all, that's loving your enemies. Someone is saying that who, who right. died for their enemies. Right. You know, somebody who's saying that who let the enemy nail them to a cross. That's, that's Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Who else is qualified mm-hmm. to tell us to do these things? Right. So, so he said, do good to them which hate you. Listen to what else he said. Now, these are commands. Love, do good. Then in verse 28, he says to bless them that curse you. Now, this doesn't mean that necessarily you got somebody just cussing you out using foul language. These are the ones that's talking falsely against you, the ones who are gossiping uh, 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 around you, who, who, who's saying things that, that are not true about you. Who knows about that? Jesus Christ knows about that. Because guess what? Everyone who said I would follow didn't follow. When he's hanging there on the cross and they're calling him everything but who he is, a child of God, and they're, they're spitting on him, and he's seeing his mother crying and he blessed them that curse you. What did he do? He prayed for them. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. He has the ultimate authority to give us these commands today. He says, and pray for them which despitefully use you, the ones that you know that's using you. Pray for them. Pray for them. So, so these are things that, that, that God has warned us to do. He's wanting us to do it. And let's say in verse 29, because I have something I want to share with you all. It says, and unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. All right. And says, and him that taketh away the cloak, forbid not to take away thy cloak also. Now, he said, offer the other cheek. All right. That's not hitting back. (laughs) And it's also meaning uh, not retaliating. All right. That's with word or with deed. All right. Uh, one thing that I know about, about God, uh, when he say vengeance is mine, he means that. So whatever you think that you can do to your enemy, you can't do anything that God do, can't do. I would, I would put it this way. God has done some things. And I've seen him do some things that make me want, oh, Lord, 
you know, pray for your enemies right there. So, so what is your little fist going to do to an enemy? Let God fight your battles. Instead of you always having to have the last word or, or strike, strike back. You know, and some of us have a I wish you would mentality. That's not the mentality of a Christian. You know, I, I know it's, it's the way that, that we were brought up to defend yourself and do things like that. But, but God is saying, let me fight your battles. Trust in me. And I like that second it definitely gives because one thing, if one man steals from you, you know, it was automatic. It was, it was law back then to where um, he owed you his coat. So if one man steal your coat, all right, you let him have it. All right. So, so it's saying... I, and I know why it's hard for us to do these things because nobody wants to be taken advantage of. No one wants to be uh, uh, a struck. No, no one wants to be used. Nobody wants to be hated. But it just, I, I don't want to be a, 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 a doormat for anyone else. So you have to think of how the, the audience is, is thinking in this time because they're, they're looking for someone, uh, a Messiah that will overthrow Rome. They're, they're tired of being... Um, misused and abused. They're, they're tired of the Romans. They're tired of the, the tax collectors that's crooked. They're, they're waiting on someone to come, a Messiah that they've been hearing about. Not to die, but to live and reign on this earth. But what they don't understand is that he came to live, but he came to die. Man. And he came to, uh, to, to reign from heaven. You know, but he did not leave us. And that goes back to what Sister Park, Parker was saying uh, a few minutes ago. He didn't leave us with, with anything uh, to fight with. He gave us the Holy Spirit. He gave us a comforter. He gave us a, he is our God. You know, he gave us everything that we need to be obedient to something that's not natural. He gave us something supernatural which is the Holy Spirit. Now, what I want us to do is, this man here, you, you see, um, uh, and some of us may have seen this picture already, but, but this man here, as I go and uh, I show you these things, this, this man, he, um, his brother was killed by this lady who's a police officer in Dallas. And, uh, his, uh, the, and we, we know, we, we've heard this lady's name is Amber Geiger. It's a Dallas police officer. This man, this uh, uh, who is 26 year old accountant. Uh, um, his name is uh, Botham John. And what he did was he was in his uh, 26 years old. He was minding his own business in his own apartment. And then this lady so-called got her apartment confused. All right. And what she did, she opened up fire and killed this man who was innocent. But then you see in court where this man brother speaks and one thing I want to just share with you, this is exactly what we're talking about, how we should be uh, in today's time, if it comes up. Give us just a second here. I just like my brother did, but I see I I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please. Yes.
Now, what that, that was is a true act of forgiveness. Can everybody still hear me? Everybody can still hear me. A true act of, of forgiveness. If you look at uh, this young man uh, who his brother uh, was killed, you know, by this lady, you can see the pain because it hurts. This, this is a true, this is an enemy, but this is also a person. This is also a soul. And because he did this, uh, it was so many people that were saying so many things that was totally uh, wrong about him. It was even some families that, that was throwing him out. How could you do something like this? He killed, she killed your brother and was only sentenced to 10 years, which means she may get out before then. Doesn't look like justice was served. But just like I, I mentioned before, Vengeance is mine, said, said the Lord. If you expect for any court or government to take care in a just manner of what we want or what we say is justice, you don't put your hope in the court system. All he wanted to do is make sure she had a life given to Christ. She want, he, he wanted to make sure that she was saved. And I don't know, he asked the judge, can they give her a hug? And he used that opportunity. We couldn't hear what he was saying, but I can only uh, imagine he was probably ministering to this young woman. You know, and so I have to ask us, are we there yet? All right. Are, are we there yet? Because this is what Christ is wanting from us, children of God. This is what he wants from us. See, it, it's easy to, to, to uh, love from afar. I love those who just who look like us and who act like us and who think the way we do. But, but whenever our backs are against the wall or whenever you may be in a position may not be as extreme as this young man, then how are we with our forgiveness? Jesus Christ goes on in, in uh, scriptures uh, in verse 30. Uh, he says, give to every man that asketh of thee and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. So a lot of us got issues with this. <laughs> what what are our issues? You know, you give to every man. Like like Brother Sloan say, all, all beings all. <laughs> Jesus Christ is, is not hesitant when he's saying these things. Give to every man which asketh of thee. And I put this picture up on the right side of your screen uh, because it's something that we see all the time. And I can guarantee you, during this pandemic, you've seen families out. You've seen families out uh, wanting food or, or, or wanting uh, or money or, or, or something, you know. But you see more people out now simply because of being uh, hit by this pandemic and, and just seeing the, the, the negative effects of it and what it, it truly does, you know, leave you unemployed, you know, because it's not like a lot of us just have money uh, just stashed away in the bank to, to live for six months to a year off of anyway. And we see those who's holding this, this sign up, hungry, <laughs> please help, God bless you. That's something that we see all the time. Doesn't matter where you go, downtown Little Rock, North Little Rock off Broadway, Wright Avenue, it doesn't matter where you go. So what goes through your mind? And I, and I want somebody who's brave and who's bold enough, courageous enough to just tell me the truth. What do you go through in your mind when you see these people? Because I'll tell you one reaction we do. We stop at the stoplight and we keep our head straight forward. We see them in the window, but our, 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 our eyes are straight on the light and we can't wait for that light to turn green. I think I want you all to remember, and it's something in Psalms, uh, 30, Psalm 37, 25, and we all heard of it, you know, but you have to understand and let it really penetrate your heart. And it's, you know, I've, I've been young and now I'm old, okay? Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread, okay? Right. So if they are scamming, Amen. all right, Amen. that doesn't have anything to do with you. And it goes back to, I can't remember who said it, but somebody said before, it's not yours anyway. I think that was a small, all right? So you're giving somebody else 
money away, all right? It's not your money, it's God's money. That's not your car, that's God's car. You know, that's not your food, that's God's food. And for me to have an attitude as far as, you know what, they just gonna smoke it up or they have a cell phone and, and see that what that does is, I don't want you all to miss your blessing simply because you are pretty much um, not staying in our lane as far as a Christian and we become a judge, all right? That's the same thing that happened when it comes to tithing. If the church doesn't do what I want with the money, again, guess what? I'm not going to give. You know, it's not your money. And guess what? If I give tithes and however the Lord put it on whoever hard to do whatever with it, it doesn't have anything to do with me. However I choose to give to this man or this woman on the street doesn't have nothing to do with me. I'm not going to uh, miss my blessing by looking somebody up and down and they could go and walk um, and, and go to a Mercedes Benz. And guess who's not going to miss their blessing? Because it's an act of obedience. So I'm looking at being obedient. I mean, we're, we're kingdom men and women. And we do have a lot of growing that we have to do. But don't let Satan put in your mind things that doesn't have anything to do or you step into a judgment lane. Because yes, like Cherie said, we do have people out there with mental illnesses. We do have people out there that, that just... You see them every day or whatever. And you do have to have a discerning spirit. And you cannot go in your, your purse or your wallet in front of everybody. It's, some, it's just not safe. You do have to be spirit-led. But for those who continue to use the same excuse, I have to be spirit-led, and you haven't given it to anybody in the past five, ten years, you cannot sit here on this Zoom Sunday school and be truthful with yourself and us and say the spirit had not led you to give anything. So one thing that, 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 that Jesus Christ is doing with his message, he's making a lot of people uncomfortable. Now, I don't know whether they were standing up or sitting down, but I can guarantee you they adjusted their seating. I, be, I believe some just left. So these are some things that are not easy to do. You know, uh, but we have to understand what Christ calls us to do. Guess what? There's no ifs, buts, ands about it. Those are the things that we should be obedient and do. It says, and as I is, as ye would that men should do uh, to you, do ye also to them likewise. This is what we call the golden rule. And Brother Evans, if I may say, Christ is not going to call us to do anything that he has not equipped us for. That's right. That's true. That's true. So, and, and then we have to, too, that we have to look at the audience. A lot of the ones that um, uh, Jesus' disciples back then, y'all, they wasn't driving like us. They weren't in houses and these nice apartments and things like us. All they had was each other. When, when they declared a uh, belief in Jesus Christ, especially after he ascended uh, in, in the heaven, and, uh, when they left their families declaring a, a belief in Jesus Christ, their families left them alone. You know, it was nobody else to depend on but Christ and each other. You know, it wasn't like they, that's why they didn't have, hey, whatever you had, you shared it. So no one would go without having. So guess what? They, they took care of one another. They could, took care of the body of Christ. If one was in need, then guess what? Everybody was supposed to chip in. And it's the same way in the body of Christ. So then in verse 32, it says, but if ye love them which love you, what thank have you? What, what good is it just to love those who just love you back? All right. Jesus Christ didn't just die for those who, who would, would, he knew that would accept him. He died for everybody, you know. So the ones who believed in him, the ones who would not believe right there but, uh, uh, in the present 2,000 years ago, and even to this day, he still died for all. It says, for sinners also love those that love them. So what's the determining factor? Um, how can we compare and contrast between the sinner and the ones who are saved? Because the sinner loves like that. The ones who are out there in the world love those like that. You know, only the ones who can help you. Only the ones who like you. It's easy to love those. But he's telling us today, love those who are difficult to even love. It goes on in Luke uh, 6 
and 33. And it says, and if ye do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? The same thing. For sinners also do these things. You know, for those who just do well to, to you, you know, those are the only ones you're going to do well for. And you have to think of how many people uh, that are out there that really need assistance. And, and guess what? We are, and I know you may not like to think of it this way, but we are the hands and the feet of Christ. Being doers of the word, that, that means movement. Love is an action word. And when you go, you cannot show love by constantly sitting down. And always thinking, I'm just going to let the Lord lead me. God has already told us in his word. While you praying, God has already told us and answered your prayers in his word of what to do, how to act, how to respond. So if you're just going to do good to those who, who, who do, do good to you, you're no different than those who are living out in the world. In verse 34, it says, and if ye lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, all right, what thank have ye? Same way as the sinners who are out in the world. If, if you only give to those who can repay you, what good is that? How are you different as a child of God other than those who have not accepted his, his, uh, his uh, son yet? You know, it says, but look, he wraps it all up. But love your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, which means if you give money, and I know some of us can att attest to this, have you ever given to somebody, you know, expecting them to pay you back and they didn't pay you back? How did that make you feel? We give them anything else. We get that one. I'm thankful. <laughs> Whoever was honest, that, I thank you for being honest because that was the mind. I'm not giving them anything else. You know, but thank God. Thank God that Jesus Christ is not that way. He continues to give us grace. And mercy, brand new each and every day. We continue to use it because he knows we're going to continue to abuse it. You know, so when we, we, we look at what God has given us, he's given us no excuses. Jesus Christ, we don't have any leg to stand on. We're talking about a, a man who left heaven to come down to earth. We're talking about someone who chose uh, 12 disciples, even one he knew that would betray him. The 11 we knew that would run when the, when the going got tough, guess what? They got going. We're talking about someone who will wash the feet of the one who would, who's sitting up there with a change in his pocket for a slave that's going to betray him. We're talking about the one who put the ear back on when Peter went berserk and chopped the soldier's ear off. And okay. we're talking about someone who showed us how to live and showed us how to forgive all the way to the cross. Thank and y'all, I, I love bringing this up because he didn't just leave after that. No. He, he, he still stayed around and he still showed them uh, before even he gave them the Holy Spirit of how we should live. He didn't leave us comfortless. He gave us a great help in the Holy Spirit. This is the only way you're going to be able to do something that's not natural. It's not natural for you to give to people who ju just want to use you. It's not natural for you to love your enemies. It's not natural for you to praise, pray for those who despitefully use you and do good for all those who have nothing, who, who curse you. It's not natural. But God has given us something supernatural called the Holy Spirit. Man. If we allow him to rest, rule, and abide it within us, guess what? Just like uh, uh, Brother Walter said, I'm still a work in progress. Yes, we all are. But the first step of recovery, guess what? We got some amending to do. You know, we have some some asking for forgiveness to do, you know, and for all those who do not think that you don't have enemies, I'm going to tell you, if you are on the side of Jesus Christ, you got some enemies. Oh, Lord. It says, and your reward will be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Y'all, we cannot forget. He is kind to the unthankful. Hmm. To, to the ones who he already know is not going to be grateful. Yes. They pierced him in the side. He already know you weren't going to believe in him. You know, they, they, they beat him beyond recognition. He already knew you weren't going to gonna, uh, uh, believe in him or, or thank him or, or trust in him. You know, and to the evil, mm -hmm. he died for you too. And y'all, I'm going to tell you how Jesus Christ is still expressing his love even to those who, who, who are evil and the, the unthankful because guess what? He's delaying his coming. He's delaying his coming. 
You know, and and, and every time that, that you have, uh, that he wakes you up, he's giving you another chance to get it right. Y'all, we are all un under construction. This is a sanctification process. If you are, are here today, then guess what? He's not done working with you yet. You have not arrived yet. We are still being perfected. So he's telling us in verse 36, to be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. Jesus Christ is saying he's not asking us to do anything that he's not willing to do himself. Now, it's something for someone to tell you to do something that you know they're not going to do. And the reason why I put this picture in the clouds and this light and this stairwell in the clouds, because, y'all, this is where we all trying to go. This is the great reward. Everyone who, who loves to love your enemies and, and be able to do all these things, this is where we're trying to go. You know, just like uh, 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 Reverend Holloway always say, this, this is nothing but a rehearsal. You know, so, so as you uh, test it each and every day, the next person will ask you to, to, to lend me this. The next person you see in need, you are, by you giving your time, by you giving food that you have that God has blessed you with, by you giving that dollar to or however many dollars that God uh, um, blesses you to give, guess what? That's nothing but an investment. And I don't know about you, but uh, there's a lot of people who don't like to invest because we like to see everything up front. I want all my check right now. Yeah. I, I don't want to put nothing back. And it's the same thing. We want to see it all right now. But God is telling us, will you trust that I'm going to prepare a place for you where your investment will be seen? Thank you, Lord. So, so we can't do anything but trust God. He wants us to trust him. No matter what people say about you that's not true, no matter what they use your titans and your gift that God has granted you with to bless others, he has not blessed you with that money in your bank account and that food in your refrigerator, you know, for you to just enjoy it, you and your family. And if you are believing that, then we need to go back to verse 27. So it's very important that we get these things uh, down. Now, we have a few takeaways. So takeaway number one, we can allow sadness, rage, powerlessness, and a host of other emotions to divide us to disobedience. Jesus calls us to do something very different, a new way of living in this world. So this lesson, Jesus is describing the nature of the kingdom. That's the point that I don't want you to forget. This is the kingdom. This is the nature of the kingdom we all long to be, and we all long to be in heaven. There's nothing but a rehearsal. Point number two, good should be shown to others for his own sake, not for the sake of anything that we may receive anything in return. So when you give, give not thinking that anybody going to pay you back, because if you think that way, you're not going to do anything but end up mad and disappointed. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I'm sure some of you all know too. Point number three, God is not commanding us to do anything he's not doing already. Number two, uh, number four, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And guess what happened to old things? All those old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. But you yeah. cannot forget about this verse 18. And I wish I had more time with this, but we got to go. It says, and all things are of God who have reconciled us to yeah. himself. How did he do that? Through the act of Jesus Christ and through Calvary. Mm. It says, and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. So this that God is telling us to do, how to love our enemies, this is a ministry to reconciliation. The way that we give others the opportunity and show them the key factor in our life who saved us, guess what? You love your enemies. We was one day an enemy too of the cross. Amen, brother. But it was somebody by the name of Jesus Christ who died for us. Then somebody had to hear about Jesus Christ to accept him. The last point is invest in Jesus. Everything you put, everything that you put into as a return. This is all gains and no losses. So, so this is heaven is a safe account. All right. So whatever you do for Christ will last. 
You know, so so those who scratching your head whether I should give or not, whether I should actually feed the hungry, whether I should actually uh, speak well of those or bless those who curse me, whether I should pray for those who 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 uh, do me wrong or I know that uh, are not doing uh, anything right by me or speaking uh, uh, not speaking well of, about me or my family. Think about your investment. Y'all, there's an investment with every good deed that you do for Christ. And what we do for Christ definitely will last. Y'all, we're going to be talking about love for our neighbors first uh, uh, by, by next week. It's going to be coming from Luke 10. Uh, we're still going to be in the book of Luke, 25th chapter through the 37th verse. So we're still going to be in inclusive love. Do we have any questions or, or comments?